I'm Enderpreet. I work as a project manager with FOSI. So I'll be talking about DAC-based virtual labs. Okay. So you know what is a DAC, a DAC system? Nobody from electrical electronics. Okay. So DAC is basically a data acquisition system. Okay. So uh, they are usually microcontroller based systems. Okay. And uh, why do we need them? So we know that things around are mostly analog. What we speak, okay, that is also analog signal. But the computer cannot understand that. So that has to be converted to digital. And if we want to also give back the output and to some analog device, so it has to be again converted from uh, digital to analog. So analog to digital and digital to analog. So that's what real world data is usually uh, analog and computer under understands digital signals. So that's where uh, data acquisition systems are used mostly. And they are used in most of the industries, like process control, manufacturing, and so on. So uh, uh, they have uh, port compatibility. They find application in several uh, domains. And the complication, uh, how complex they are, that depends on the application. So it could be a simple microcontroller, Arduino-based board, or it could have a huge a uh, sequence of microcontrollers talking to each other and then in turn talking to a computer. Okay, so uh, why this project? So uh, this project is funded by MHRD and several IITs and other colleges are taking part in this. But why DAC based virtual lab? So uh, DAC cards, we know that they ha find huge application in the market. Okay, now uh, currently NI is one of the big players in this market. It is a proprietary, uh, it is a company, so it pro provides proprietary hardware and software. Okay, so uh, they obviously charge heavily for the hardware and also the software. Now, where the problem comes is that sometimes they do give hardware and after a few years, the software becomes obsolete. So they'll say that we uh, don't provide down uh, lower compatibility, back compatibility with the hardware. So either the software is obsolete or hardware, they do, uh, stop giving support and so on. So what we plan to do is uh, build a virtual app, okay, use an open source data acquisition framework, and uh, provide access to inputs and outputs of these uh, data acquisition cards over internet. So basically what a virtual lab is, uh, do you know that? So why do we do experiments? We learn theory and we do experiments, right? So to get practical knowledge, right? So virtual labs are to give practical knowledge to you over internet. So there are some colleges which cannot afford uh, expensive hardware. So that's why MHRD has funded this project wherein the colleges, universities who have that hardware can give access to people anywhere in the country, for that matter, anywhere in the world over internet. Okay, so we have such virtual labs in IIT Bombay, some in um, other IITs also. So now you know what a virtual lab is, right? So this DAC-based virtual lab will give you access to a data acquisition system over internet. So um, basically, we want to see what are the available open source DAC cards uh, against the NI-based DAC cards, okay? So if we, want, if we want to ask somebody that you use this open source DAC card, we have to tell that, okay, this can be replaced with the, uh, by, you can replace the NI-based card with our open source solution. So that's the objective. So uh, we have some of the DAC cards available. Uh, these are the few, uh, Advantec, Adlink, NI-based. So NI does provide drivers for some of them on Linux. But again, we have to see that how much can we access them, uh, how much can we tweak them through open source software. So the workflow required here would be, you look for the drivers available for the DAC cards. Then in case drivers are not available, write them in C, C++, and then access these through Scilab, Open Modelica, or Julia. So Scilab, Shamika already spoke about. Uh, Julia, uh, Manas spoke about. Open Modelica is also one uh, more open source uh, software. It's a tool, simulation tool. So we are looking for solution for either of these. Xcos on desktop and Xcos on web. To start with, have you heard of LabView? In my presentation? 
or before that. Okay, so NI is the one uh, that runs LabVIEW. It's by National Instruments. Okay, it is a GUI-based uh, GUI based tool. You can uh, take the blocks, drop them on the editor, and then simulate them. Also, it provides access to data acquisition cards, several hardware devices. Okay, so we here again for the Virtual Labs project look forward to develop a software which can replace LabVIEW. Xcos, uh, Shamika spoke about it. It is. It comes with which tool? Scilab. Okay. So MATLAB has Simulink. Have you heard of Simulink? So Xcos is Simulink equal equivalent, which comes with Scilab. So we are using this uh, Xcos to provide an equivalent of LabVIEW. So Virtual Labs, I already spoke about that we want to give access to experiments uh, over internet to the people. And it is funded by MHRD. Uh, LabVIEW also, I told you that uh, it is it comes from NI. Uh, there is a web publishing feature in LabVIEW. So you just go in one of the menu, and you have a diagram. It is called the Virtual Instrument VI in LabVIEW. So you just click that web publishing tool, and it is available on internet. So through a web browser, anyone can use it. OK, so we are looking for a similar equivalent. So we name this uh, software, the one we are developing, as Sandhi. We'll call it as xcos based Sandhi. And we are looking for uh, uh, interns to work on the following two things, xcos on web and xcos on desktop. So the way we have eSIM on desktop and web, this is uh, something similar. So this is how it looks on web. So this work was uh, solely done by Aditya. We are looking for more interns for this. You can see there are some blocks. You drag and drop the blocks. You connect them. And there will be a simulator button, which will simulate the diagram. So it could be mathematical operations, electrical controls, and so on, whatever is available in Scilab, in Scilab XCOS. Now, uh, for the web version, you see that this is on the browser. You can drag, drop, connect. Now, the way it will work is we have to port that and make it available on the browser. Then we have to, once we press simulate, uh, the diagram should be able to be exported to XML, send it to the server. Server will do the processing and give it back to the browser, the result. So that's how the workflow will be. So uh, we need uh, skills for browser version, uh, mostly on JavaScript and XML. OK, because the equivalent library MX graph is already available. So we can use that directly. Now this is how it looks on the desktop, very similar, right? But not so beautiful as LabVIEW makes it look. So we just want it to be a bit customized. Also, in Xcos, when we run a diagram, and if there are, this is a plot. The blue colored thing, this is a plot. Plot. It's a graphic window, basically. When you run it, you'll be able to see the graph. OK, so if there are multiple graphs, they'll pop up in different windows. So one of the tasks would be to weave these windows together. OK, so backend Xcos mostly uses C++ and Java. We need to make it look more user friendly. Then we have to stitch the graphic windows together. and we need to add more properties to the available blocks, and if possible, some more blocks. So skills we are looking for are Java Swing and knowledge of C++. So again, some of the interns have already started working on this. And for the server end, I talked about conversion, XML, and then uh, that Xcos can understand, and vice versa. So for that, we need web technologies, knowledge of Java, C, C++. So hope to see you then.